Hi guys, so today we're going to be trying Sissy Clay. I've heard and seen a lot about this stuff. I don't know why it's taken me so long to try it, but you guys know as time goes on, I like to mold my charms a little bit more myself and just kind of, you know, sculpt and get a little more arts and craftsy with my nails. I've seen a lot of people do a lot of really cool stuff with this product, so I am super stoked to try it today. But first I wanna thank McCart for sponsoring this video. McCart has just launched their cover acrylic collection. So if you've heard the term cover acrylic and you don't really know what that means, all it is is basically a line of acrylics that are more so designed to go over the natural nail. Typically these are more neutral shades and shades that complement skin tones. As usual, you can use my code code Emily Susanna for 15% off anything on McCart's site. You guys already know I love McCart's acrylics, so I was super excited for these to come out. And before we can use the clay, we have to have nails to put them on. So let's take a look at the new cover acrylics from McCart. So here I have my four shades that I got, so let's go through them. First off, we have Milky White, which I really love. I'll probably use this one today. It's white, but without being like stark white. You know what I mean? Next up, we have Go To, and this one is a light pink. I will probably also use this one. Very pretty. This one is Grapefruit, which I think is very fitting. It is spot on for a grapefruit. This is definitely a brighter shade of the bunch. And the last shade that I have here is Bliss. This is definitely more of a caramel color. I really like this one also. I really love warm tones for base colors. If I didn't think that it would sort of clash with what I'm wanting to do today with all of the little sculpted decorations, I would probably lean towards using this one. I'm really going back and forth today on doing just an all white nail or a white and pink ombre, except I was thinking of maybe doing the white as the base and then the pink on the tips. I feel like that could be, you know, a good change up from the normal ombre. I think I'm gonna do that. So let's get all of these on and prep my nails. I'm actually going to leave these nails on for a bit. So we're gonna actually prep them today. I do have some staining from purple shampoo. And unfortunately there is literally nothing I can do about that right now. I have washed my hands a ton of times and tried to scrub under and it's just not coming off. But that should be just fine because these acrylics should cover it no problem. I'm gonna be taking the 100 and 180 grit side on this file. This 180 is still pretty gentle and just roughing up my nail. I don't really have any cuticle or anything that needs to be taken off of my actual nail because I did that like a couple days ago. Now I'm going to wipe off with some swipe. I got the tips that I'm going to be using. They are the acrylic stiletto. Just be sizing, oh that's two of them, all of them out. And then it's been a while since I've done some, you know, longer nails so I think I'm actually going to leave these at their full length which I'm really excited about. Perfect, it's been a while since we've done something this long. And before we start that, I'm going to file down these little itty bitty, you know, like edges that stick off a little bit and just make this a little bit more pointed. For primer, I'm going to be using the Young Nails Protein Bond. And let's get started. So I'm gonna start with the white. We're going to essentially do a reverse baby boomer ombre. I am so glad that McCart went with sort of a quicker setting more dense type of acrylic because it makes it so much easier for me to work. I don't know if anyone else thinks it's easier, but this just makes it so much easier when it's just setting a bit quicker, a little bit more dense. I feel like I don't really mess up as much, make as many mistakes. Kind of looks like we're trying to do an actual French tip, which is not what I'm trying to do. I'm just ombre this down. Perfect, looking nice. Except for that hair as usual. This will be my last bead of white. Kind of just filling in, smoothing out anything that I missed. Perfect. Let's dip into the pink now. Voila. Okay. And here we are with our finished first nail. I'm really excited at how this looks. It's subtle, but it's so pretty. And these acrylics are so easy to work with. I don't think I'm gonna have to file very much at all, which you guys know is the absolute best. So let's do the rest of the fingers. They're all gonna be the same. So I've finished all of the nails and are you ready for a surprise? I know I did both hands this side. It's obviously not nearly as good because it's my opposite hand, but yeah, both hands, crazy. I know it's still drying, um, but I'm going to do some filing now. I did both hands because I actually have to be somewhere in a couple hours. So I'm gonna try to file these as quick as possible. 
And here are how the nails look now. They filed up super, super nice. And obviously something has changed, right? So here's the deal. I accidentally burned myself a little bit. It's not bad while cooking. It's just a couple little small spots, but they blistered and it's ugly to look at. So I'm going to be using these little fingertipless gloves for a little bit while that heals because I have one of those hydrocolate hydrocolide, I don't know how to say it, bandages on there. And basically that ends up looking like a giant pimple patch and it's just gross to look at. And I don't wanna subject you guys to that. So for a little bit, I'm just gonna be wearing these gloves. People who normally would use these gloves when getting their nails done, use them to protect their skin from the UV light. And that's not something I am personally concerned with, which is why I don't really use them, but they're always an option if that is something you are concerned about. But for me, it's just so you guys don't have to look at my, uh, you know, little mishap there. So yeah, I just wanted to address that really quickly and let's move on. And here's our clay. I'm super excited to open these. I also got an additional gel and this is their like molten, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's like a really metallic silver gel. But I really just want to open one of these up. So let's do that. Okay, let's see. All right, not super sticky. Looks like it's pretty soft too. Not super soft, but malleable. And lastly, here is this like molten gel. It almost looks like mirrory. It is really, really reflective almost. So I'll definitely want to do some design with that, but let's start making some 3D art. I have a huge long list of ideas. And my first idea was a Lucky Charms nail. So we'll start off with that little shooting star. I am not exactly sure what to use to get this stuff out, but I'm just gonna grab it with my random tools that I have. I'm not 100% sure if this stuff is okay to touch. Looking on the back, the ingredients are there, and I don't know exactly what the first couple things say, but it says it has acrylic monomer and mica. It doesn't have just like straight HEMA, but usually acrylic monomer has that. HEMA is a common allergen that some people can develop an allergy to. So that's why most of the time you don't really want to touch uncured nail products. Cured, it's usually fine, but uncured, you just don't really want to be touching a lot of that. So I'm not sure. I've seen in some of their videos, they do touch it. I might grab some gloves out and use that to like roll it, but I'm just going to see how well I'm able to work with it just maybe like this. Okay, so like I said, we're going for lucky charm type things, I think. So, oh, okay, stick into that. I really wanna touch it. It's really hard to not just literally use it like clay because it's not really letting me mush this around that much. Okay, that's better. Just took a sec. All right, this is definitely working a bit easier than some of the other clays I've used, kinda, except sticking to this, oh my gosh. Okay, let me find something else. All right, let me try a wax pencil. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, cool. This is a bit harder than I thought. Uh-oh. Okay then. Okay, I got different gloves and rolling it is a lot better to start out with. Now I'm gonna stick it on. Oh, so much better. That is so much better. Okay, so that's the middle part. Now I'm just going to smush this down. Okay, honestly, it's a little bit harder to work with than I thought it was going to be. Like, I feel like it's very much not wanting to stick to my nail. I just went back and watched some of their tutorials and it does look like they really utilize the wax pencil. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I'm trying to re-flatten all this out so I can maybe make a star. This is absolutely a little bit harder than I thought it was gonna be. I thought because of all of my time sculpting with poly gel and you know, all this other stuff, it was gonna be a little bit easier, but it is absolutely not. <laughs> but I think I'm getting the hang of it a little bit. This is the easiest modeling gel or whatever that I have used at least. I remember I got some a little while ago from AliExpress and I thought it was going to be like this stuff, you know, being able to roll it and stuff like that. But when I opened it, it was super hard and it was definitely not what I was hoping for. Do you guys remember that? I don't remember, I think it was my 500K video and I tried to make a cow and it just went really bad. 
Okay, I think we're actually off to a good start now. I was really doubting it for a second if I was gonna be able to make this work, but I think I'm going to. So now we have to do the other sides. All right, just a little bit. And roll, 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 roll. This is a bright orange. Very, very bright. Would you be able to tell what that is? Maybe after I do the other ones too. I chose this nail since I'm gonna try to put a couple of them on here. It's the biggest nail. That might have been too much. Kind of looks more of like a slug to me right now. Okay, what do we think? Does it look like a Lucky Charm? Does it not? I don't know. Maybe an actual Lucky Charm, not like a drawing of a Lucky Charm. I don't know. I haven't had Lucky Charms in a really long time because I can't eat them since I'm a vegetarian. But I'm going to pretend this is what it looks like. So let's cure it. It does say that the stuff needs a bit of time to cure, one to two minutes. So I'm going to set my lamp at 90 seconds and cure it. And voila, let's move on. Maybe something a little bit easier. This color looks really good. I think Lucky Charms has some hearts. So I think that will be a good one to do. I feel like that might be a little bit easier than what I was trying to do the first time. It's kind of hard to stick on to the nail. I don't know if it needs to be like top coated and maybe that would help. Ah, I'm having such a hard time with this one. I don't know why. It's so easy to mold in your hand, but with tools, I'm having such a hard time. Maybe I just try to smush it on like so, just really hard. And then I can try to cut out what I want. Okay, that's definitely better. And voila, here's the heart. Again, gonna cure this. Next, I'm gonna do the horseshoe. This is definitely a little bit too dark. So I wonder if we can mix these clays. So I'm going to try to mix some white in to see if we can make some custom colors. I feel like it would suck a little bit if we couldn't make our own colors. All right, let's see. I'm just gonna kind of roll them together. Kind of hard with these gloves. I always buy size large gloves so that I can account for the nails, but sometimes they're a little too big. Okay, so it will take a bit of kneading, but we can mix our own color. I think it still looks a teeny tiny bit marbled, but I am happy we can mix custom colors. I feel like you get a really good range of colors in this so you can pretty much mix whatever you want so now let's make the horseshoe this one should hopefully be easy i feel like one of my biggest problems is it actually sticking to my nail and i have wiped off my nail with some acetone and i haven't top coated it yet or anything maybe i need to do that so on my next nail i will top coat it before we try to put any more of the clay on like i'm feeling like i have to really smush it to get it to stay at all it does turn out that the nails make good tools as well though. Yay! It's a little marble. I should have mixed a little bit more, but it's still really cute. Then I really like that we have some neutral shades in here as well. So I'm gonna make one of the cereal pieces and the Lucky Charms. Cause those are pretty simple and I feel like this color matches it enough. Okay, hopefully this one should be easy cause it's just an X. So lay one piece, might be a little too big. Lay one piece, there we go. Cool. There we go. And I'm gonna make one more. I wanna make the little moon. I wasn't going to, cause I didn't think we had the color for it, but now that we can mix things, gonna make it. And I'm using some of this like leftover beige. I wonder if there's an easier way to mix this. I'm gonna see if it's just easier to just like mush this all out together like this and then just like roll it on up. I would say like half of this is white. It does not lighten up very easily. So if you're wanting to mix this stuff, make sure you have mostly a light color and then just a teeny tiny bit of whatever main color you're wanting to lighten. All right, this is as light as it's gonna get because I don't wanna have to keep adding more because I don't wanna make too much and then waste it. Okay, I'm gonna put it here. All right, here's the moon. It actually looks good itself, but I think I did it kind of at a weird angle on the nail, but I'm gonna leave it because I can't really change it now. I'm gonna cure it and let's top coat this. So here's our weirdly spaced Lucky Charms nail. I'm going to top coat all of this now. because that's just what it says to do. Try to get in all the little crevices. It also says that you can use any other gel on top too. So if you wanted to say draw a face or add details or whatever, you can do that also. And here it is. I feel like this was more of our test nail, you know, to kind of get a vibe for the product, but I'm really liking it so far. And so I think we're gonna be able to make some cool stuff. I have a couple ideas. 
So let's get to it. I just went really quick and added this little hat to try to make it a little bit more telling of what this is. Cause I asked David what this nail seemed inspired by and he had no clue. So it looks all right, definitely don't have good spacing. Maybe I'll do something in the spaces, but let's move on. I'm going to top coat this nail before we put any of the clay and we can see if that helps with its stickiness. I want to try to make a strawberry because I feel like strawberries are kind of just my go-to charm. So I feel like I have to, except I'm gonna make this one neon pink. Okay, I think I'm just going to start out with a little ball here. Will it stay? Maybe. And I'm just gonna push it down a bit and then we can start to maybe mold it. Okay, I don't know if it's helping with the adhesion of the clay. Once it's cured on there, it is on there. It's just kind of hard to get it to stick in the first place. I think that looks good. I think I'm going to cure this before I put any of the stem on there, just so this doesn't move around at all. Alrighty, let's get the stem going. I decided to just start a little pot of custom colored clay. And surprisingly, I left by accident this blue out all night no cover or anything like that and it did dry out i don't know how long it would take to dry out but definitely didn't dry out after a night which was nice because if you're like me i often will build a nail and then the next day come back and decorate them or start decorating one day and finish another you know it's a whole process i think i'm just going to roll this and then try to like cut little chunks I don't know why this looks like a strawberry with like an emo haircut to me, but I'm liking how it looks. Nonetheless, I'm just gonna try to flatten this down here. I think I'm gonna cure that and then add a little bit more to that little top there. Doesn't that look so cute? Now we just have to add a little bit more to just round out that top a tiny bit. But all of that is cured, so I don't have to worry about messing up all these cute little stems. Honestly, I'm using my finger feels like the best tool with this which kind of sucks i think because your finger is warm and i think that helps it just you know being a little bit more malleable that would be my guess anyway and now i'm going to do the little details so hear me out i am going to make the seeds light pink because this is obviously not a realistic strawberry because strawberries don't come in hot pink. I wish they did, but they don't. So I feel like I don't have to have the seed color also be realistic. Look at how cute. I love this. I love being able to make my own charms. It used to really intimidate me, but I really like it now. I feel like really proud when something turns out well. Okay, gonna cure that and top coat. Oh, so cute. Next up, I want to do something like a little bit more abstract swirly so that we can also use that really cool metallic gel that we got. So I want to go into the black. All right, I don't know how much I need. It's kind of hard to judge. And I'm just going to use this roll technique to just get a bunch of pretty thin strips that we can kind of just lay on and try to swirl. I'm just hoping that it'll stick if I like lightly lay it on, you know, once we cure it. I really do like that it's not sticking to the glass though. All right, let's see if we can. Oh no, it's sticking now. Oh <gasps> no, I left it too long. No. Okay, we're good. It's kind of wanting something just like a little, you know, abstract the abstract <laughs> i was kind of hoping that it would continue in one thing though okay let's try this again i'm gonna try to just lay it down it seems like if it sits for a second it will kind of stick a little bit and i think i'm gonna do the same with like a piece of white honestly some of this just kind of feels like playing with play-doh it's quite a throwback okay not quite what i was wondering but might have to take it i kind of like it it's kind of definitely abstract <laughs> You know? All right, there that is. I don't know exactly how I'm going to incorporate this very shiny gel, but again, I'm just gonna wing it. This is just, you know, a little experimental nail. I haven't even swatched this stuff yet. We're just going straight in. Ooh, it is so metallic. Look at that. This reminds me a lot of that mirror paint that I got from that art supply place that has the blackest black paint. You guys remember that? Oh, I like it, fun. Wow, I love this stuff. Mm, that doesn't look quite right. The problem with that mirror paint from the art supply place was it wasn't really meant for nail art or anything like that. So it was kind of hard to top coat and it ended up losing its reflectiveness once you did top coat it. 
You guys see how shiny that is? You know what? I actually like this one so much more than I thought I would. I kind of thought I messed it up a little bit, to be honest. So here's this one. I'm gonna cure it and top coat it. And voila. Now, of course, we're getting into spooky season, so we have to do a nail with a Halloween theme. All right, so I'm gonna start out with just this ball here. There we are. And I'm going to just smush it down. This will require some gel art also. That's totally fine. I am trying to make it look creepy too, not cute, but also not necessarily super realistic because I'm making an eye and eyes aren't purple. Might be too big, the pupil. That's definitely way too big. That works. All right, these next parts will probably be the hardest to make like the eyelid. I don't know. Here we go. I feel like when this is glossy, it should hopefully look especially creepy. And I'll definitely add more details. I'm not gonna leave it super plain today. Although I feel like with this clay, a lot of it looking really simple still looks really good. I thought the clay was going to be a little bit easier to use, but it's not necessarily hard to use either, if that makes sense. It's definitely a lot easier once you get sort of some technique down and kind of, you know, get a feel for how the clay works. I don't know if that looks right, but I can't exactly pinpoint what doesn't look right. Now the question is, do we do eyelashes? I think I'm gonna try, but I don't know if they'll quite work out. I'm going to sort of take the same approach that I did with the stem for the strawberry. So we'll see, except I'm gonna try to make it thinner than that even. Ooh, creepy. Does it look, oh my gosh, look at how realistic. It looks like it has an eyelash extension on. It's gonna take a lot of patience. It's fine, it's fine. Okay, I don't think this is gonna be it. I feel like it looks scary in like the fact that I don't want my eyelashes to look like that, but not like scary realistic, you know what I mean? I feel like I'm not sure what else to do to this to make it creepy. I think I'm going to try to maybe smooth the skin down, maybe that'll help. So something I figured out is that you're definitely able to smooth this out if you use a little bit of alcohol, swipe, some sort of, you know, liquid on a brush, which was super helpful and it's really good to know because that helped a lot. Look at how smooth it came out. So I'm just gonna add, I don't know, some details to the eye and skin, I guess. Just try to make it a little bit creepier. Maybe purple wasn't the best for creepiness with the eye, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna try to just do like a little bit of shading. I have a really, really sheer pink. I'm gonna try to maybe build up a little bit. Then I think I just wanna add something a little bit creepier to this. It seems a little incomplete to me. So maybe some stitches or something. The last thing I need to do is top coat the snail, but look at how realistic those, I guess, staples look. I love this gel. I'm gonna be reaching for it all the time. So cool. But this whole thing is just getting a top coat. I feel like it looks kind of, I don't know, extra creepy when it's shiny. So actually I went back and did some of this matte and it looks a lot better. <laughs> way, way, way better. So let's do the last nail now. I think we're gonna go a little simple on this one and do some rainbow flowers. So it's gonna take quite a few little itty bitty balls of clay and I'm gonna try to do a full rainbow around each flower, but we'll see what I can fit. And if I have some extra room, maybe I'll try to do some leaves too. I feel like now that I've gotten getting the clay to stick a little bit better, I feel a little bit more ambitious. Figuring out that you just need like a little bit of alcohol to help it stick a lot better was definitely a game changer for that because I was struggling a little bit. Okay, so to get the clay to stick a little bit better, I think it's a little bit easier to put some like rubbing alcohol or swipe on your nail. And then when you go to pick these up, 
put it down and it sticks a little bit better. If it's not really sticking immediately, I'd say just like hold it there and wait for the alcohol to dry. And I feel like that just grips the gel a teeny bit. Try to move these a tiny bit. It's so cute. That yellow's a little big, that's okay. So I've gotten all of that. I feel like I need to just like straight like smush them down, but I don't know if that's a bad idea. Like maybe I push inside a little bit. Cute, that is so cute. Now let's try this one. This one's gonna be a little bit more tricky probably. It still looks all right. Bottom one didn't turn out quite as good. It's a little smushed together. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what? I'm gonna make this one into a butterfly because I feel like it has more of a butterfly shape than a flower shape, right? Yes. I'm just going to add all of the little details now, see if I can fix this <laughs> butterfly. All right, that one turned out kind of plain. I probably shouldn't have done the butterfly. The butterfly is questionable, but nonetheless, we're done. I love this stuff. This clay and the silver are gonna come in so handy for all of my Halloween designs I'm gonna do. And this particular clay is the best that I've tried so far out of any of the moldable colored gels, I guess. I don't know if I would necessarily call this a gel. Definitely a clay is a better thing for it, but it definitely worked so much better than any of the other ones I've tried so far. Do let me know if you have any ideas of stuff you want me to mold with this stuff in general or for Halloween. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a like. I really appreciate it and it helps me out a ton. Once again, thank you McCart for sponsoring this video and I will hopefully see you next time. Bye.